My name is Brendan. Um, as Greg said, I'm a student at the university. I study evolutionary biology. I'm also a journalist, and I love animals. I love to write and talk about when animals do really impressive things, like when a peregrine falcon dive bombs a pigeon at over 200 miles per hour. Uh, and I've come to understand, as well as everyone else has come to understand, impressive feats like this through scientific research. Science is the process through which we make sense of the world, and it's a wonderful way for us to enrich our discourse with facts and elegant explanations. My personal aspiration is to communicate science to the general public and get everybody excited about all the cool local science going on around us. Uh, my only objective for tonight is to spark your curiosity. I'm going to be speaking about interesting science having to do with the San Lorenzo River, of which there is plenty. This, we know that the San Lorenzo River drains the many water passages of the Santa Cruz Mountains. It's also home to dozens of impressive animals and plants, redwoods, oaks, pumas, rattlesnakes, falcons, and more. When we think of the San Lorenzo River and the Santa Cruz Mountains, uh, we think of all that natural beauty. We think of majestic mountain lions, beautiful blue herons, and the precious water resources that desperately need our attention and our protection. Now, all of those things are true, those things are there, but just for tonight, I want to frame the San Lorenzo River in a slightly different sense, in a light of sex and violence. <laughs> all of those animals and plants came to be through evolution. The cold process of natural selection favors traits and strategies that propagate genes. Sometimes, under certain circumstances, strange and macabre practices work best. Some animals have developed bizarre sexual practices. Other animals employ violence to secure their interests. Sometimes some animals do both. Did you know, for example, that in the San Lorenzo River, there lies an animal with skin so poisonous that a single specimen could kill the majority of people in this room? And it's not just poisonous, it's perverse, with members participating in muddy orgies that last for hours on end. I'm talking about... <laughs> the California Newt! This is our unofficial state amphibian. These guys are deadly perverts. Every winter they amass in these wiggling balls of newt orgies, sometimes 20 newts thick. I once interviewed a nature filmmaker, Lance Milbrand, who claimed to have observed newts engaged in sexual relations for over four hours. <laughs> These guys are also poisonous. Inside their skin is tetrodotoxin. It's the same neurotoxin found in pufferfish and blue-winged octopuses. Tetrodotoxin silences nerve cells. It binds to the nerve in such a way that the neurochemical signals needed to initiate organ function or muscle contraction are stonewalled rendering newt adversaries ill and paralyzed. But not all are susceptible to the newt's malignant munitions. Some garter snakes are immune to tetrodotoxin, but only where garter snake and newt populations overlap geographically. At those locations, the two animals are engaged in an evolutionary arms race, meaning that when one animal gains, a counter, one animal gains an evolutionary advantage, the other, say, like lethal poison, the other animal gains a counter-advantage, like heightened resistance, and the two escalate until their advantages become disadvantageous or too costly to bear. And right now, the snake is winning because it costs less, fewer genetic changes to achieve resistance than it does for the newt to achieve more lethal poison. Now, this is an example of interspecies violence. That would be violence committed between members of two different species. The San Lorenzo River is also home to an animal that commits interspecies violence. That's violence committed mem on members of its own species, violence committed upon its own infants. And this animal is the black-clad, red-eyed, baby-strangling American coot. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's a water bird that occupies most of the West Coast. They migrate northeast in the summer to breed. Uh, you can find them in Neary Lagoon. And most of the time, they spend their time scooting around the water surface in search of bugs and algae and little fish to eat. But sometimes adult coots will peck chicks from their own nest to death. Now, why would an animal do this? One reason. Conspecific brood parasitism. These birds are parasites. Sometimes some coots produce more offspring than could survive, given the limited resources like food and nesting sites. So they've evolved a clever defector strategy. What they do is they'll lay their own eggs in other birds' nests. And then that, that host bird is seemingly duped into raising the parasite eggs, chicks. The parasite birds, chicks. Uh, now, this works because um, most of the time the uh, the uh, oh I'm sorry there's uh, the newts like the newt and the the coot like the newt and the snake have evolved a counter strategy. What they do is they uh, they watch for the first eggs to hatch and they observe physical cues from those chicks and they use those then as a template and they kill subsequent chicks that differ. They just murder them outright. Now uh, the for as far as parenting goes, coots are even worse than that. 
when they've dispatched the defector chicks and they're left with what is likely their own kin, they will then preferentially give more food to prettier chicks. Coots are unique in the sense that the first three weeks of their life, they have this beautiful bright plumage. Uh, the more bright, the more uh, food you receive from your parents. Now, and there's an underlying theme to all of this, which I think is really cool, is we can make sense of animals' behavior much of the time by thinking in terms of strategy. Uh, the newt's evolving poison is a strategy. The snake's resistance is like a strategy. And the coots watching the clock on their eggs is like a strategy. Now, they're not strategies in the sense that they're consciously chosen and executed. They're not strategies in the sense that they're perfect because evolution doesn't produce perfect animals. Instead, uh, what these are is they're behavioral traits that arise via natural selection and they strike a good balance between energetic investment and reward. Animals are like economists. They, they practice behaviors that give them the most energetic buck for their resource reward. Now, that's just three animals that we've talked about in the San Lorenzo River and we've already gone over infanticide, neurotoxic poison, and amphibious <laughs> orgies. Imagine if we were to develop, go to del delve into all the other animals in the San Lorenzo River and the Santa Cruz Mountains, we'd have a lot more sex and violence to talk about. <laughs> but the good thing is, is we live in Santa Cruz. Uh, we live in this unique place where scientists are at arm's reach. The person who did the coot research is Bruce Lyon up at the university. The people who did the newt research, those are folks from Stanford. And these folks are giving public, accessible, fun lectures all the time at Pechacucha Talks, at the University, Seymour Marine Long Discovery Center, and you can always go to hilltrumper.com, who I write for, and you can read that stuff for yourself. The science is out there, it's interesting, go check it out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>